Well, uh, the, the main problem with the progesterone, with the le progesterone levels in IVF is that they can be really, really different. And of course, they are related to the number of eggs and the number of follicles that you've produced. Uh, the only, uh, nowadays, the, the, um, the levels of progesterone are being tested and we are trying to find out which are the correct levels in cases in which the conditions are very similar. For example, in cases of cryotransfers or in cases of transfers of egg donation, in which patients are under an hormone replacement therapy. In these cases, the conditions are quite strict and you can uh, um, repeat the same conditions in future cycles. In these cases, the, the, there are even some differences between different groups, but we accept that progesterone levels over, uh, I would say, 9.2 up to 10.2 are the cutoff point. In these cases, when the levels are below this, we recommend adding some subcutaneous progesterone to the vaginal pessaries. In IBF, well, I wouldn't say that there is no reference at this point and depends a lot on the number of eggs, as I said before, but having levels that are over 15, 16 are quite common, uh, but there is no advantage, for example, on taking uh, intramuscular progesterone that are going to put you at levels of 50 or 54. Once you are over this 15, 16 nanograms per milliliter, of course, the units are sometimes Mm, it's confusing because the, the progesterone can be measured in nanomoles per liter or in nanogram, uh, nanograms per milliliter. So uh, sometimes we need to be aware of that. But in our case, we, uh, we work with uh, picogra uh, nanograms per milliliter. If you are over uh, 15, 16, you, sh you can be absolutely um, relaxed and uh, because the levels are never going to be a problem.